Hey what's going on guys Tanmay here for simple snippets and in this video tutorial we are going to take a look at a new pattern printing program wherein as you can see on the screen we are going to try to print this pattern. Now pattern printing programs help us understand the working and functioning of looping control statements like for loop while loop and other loops and these are generally asked to beginners in their competitive exams in their college exams and even in aptitude test or sometimes in interviews because these programs test your logic and visualization wherein you have to keep on dry running the code dry running the looping control statements to get the exact output that is asked in the question now we've been doing these programs quite often in this separate dedicated playlist and if you followed this then you know that we've printed many triangle programs and different different pattern programs as well using the different for loops and different conditions. Now one of the comment of a user on our channel hopefully our subscriber came in where he asked to print this pattern and it got me thinking that we've already done this pattern so just to show you guys this is that similar pattern where you are printing A then you are printing B and C then you are printing D E F and in that proper progression but if you observe the request that he is asked in the comment is where he wants the pattern something like this only where you're printing alphabets in succession but what he is asking is after every alphabet you want an uppercase alphabet then a lowercase so you can see there is alternate lowercase and uppercase then lowercase then uppercase then lowercase then uppercase so this got me thinking that there has to be something different in the code in the looping statements which creates this pattern right so this is what we are going to try to understand and dry run and then we will also see a program and execute this in the practical side so make sure you watch this video till the end and below here is the basic looping statements which we are going to dry run onto this digital blackboard so just to show you this is what we are going to expect and assume as our command prompt and each block will basically denote a space on the command prompt on the output screen and this is where we are going to print this so this is what we've been doing in the pattern printing program and dry running these for loops give us the best visualization and best understanding of these looping control statements so that we can keep a track of the variables and the changes in the variables as well as the output at every single step okay so with that being said let's try to study this code and let's dry run it step by step onto the output and see if we can generate this pattern okay so before we start understanding the code snippet please make sure you watch the other video which is this triangle pattern 3 where we printed a b c d e f because the looping statement is pretty much the same with some extra changes so that will help you understand the logic and then we have some more addition to the logic which creates this alternating lower and upper case okay to create these lower and upper cases you need to understand the concept of ascii values of these individual characters and just to show you this is the ascii table for these values okay so if you see the upper case a has a ascii value in decimal form as 65 and the lower case a has 97 similarly b has 66 this has 98 so if you see there is a constant difference between the two lower and upper case alphabets and that difference is actually equal to 32 okay so if you observe 97 minus 65 you'll get 32 similarly if you do 98 minus 66 again you'll get 32 okay so keep that in mind this is the logic that we're going to use when we are going to alternate between a and the upper case b then c and something like that okay all right Let's track the variables first. You create a int n variable. n is nothing but the number of rows that you want to print, which we will take from the user. So let's say n equals to zero. This is the initial initialization over here. Then you take c in. If you're using any other programming language like Java or something like that, the input taking methodology is going to be different. In C++, we do c in and we take this value from the user. So let's say n is equal to four. Okay, we want to print first four lines. Or let's say n equals to 5 okay all right the next variable that you initialize is alphabet a because that is going to be the starting point so let me write alphabet equals to lowercase a correct okay then we say int count equals to 0 so count is another variable which is initialized before the looping statement and now the looping starts 
Now we have already studied pattern printing programs previously. We know that the first for loop generally is for the number of rows. Correct. So currently n equals to five. So we'll start int i equals to one. I is less than equal to n. So we will go from one to five, which means this outer loop will run five times. So in triangle printing generally the outer loop is for the number of rows and currently we want n equals to five, which means we want to print five rows. So this for loop is going to run five times and the inner loop is where the actual printing happens and actual logic is written. Okay. So now let's go inside. Let's say i is equal to one. Okay. So we are at the very first iteration. So over here we say int j equals to one. We initialize a internal variable again, a looping variable j equals to one. J has to be less than equal to one. So when j is equal to one, is it less than equal to i, which is also currently one? Yes. So we will go inside this for loop. Now see, we have initialized a count variable. I'll tell you why we have done that. I didn't explain to you why we are using this count variable. But as you progress in this dry running process, step by step, you'll understand why we have this variable extra over here. We say count plus plus. So initially count is zero. When you say plus plus, count will become one. So let's make that change over here. So count becomes one. Now there is extra line of code over here, which is if else, which logic is used to printing the alternate lower and upper case. Okay. Let me explain how. So we have created this extra count variable over here. This variable will go from one, two, three, four, and so on in the progressing manner because we are doing count plus plus. So why are we doing that? So you can see for the first time we want a lower case. So when count will be one, we will have lower case. Then we will do count plus plus in this loop again, right? Because this loop is going to keep running for the printing. So when count becomes two, we want a upper case. So when count becomes three, we want a lower case. We, when count becomes four, we want a upper case. When count becomes five, we want a lower case. So when the count is odd, we want a lower case. When the count is even, we want a upper case. Okay, so this is the logic for using this extra variable. And the only reason we are doing this odd even is because alternatingly we want lower case and then upper case. And with each increment of this number, alternately we will have even odd, even odd, even odd, right? So that is why I'm using it. It's not necessary that this logic is the only one that will create this pattern. There might be some other logic, but my logic is that I'm going to use this extra variable count. And I will keep on incrementing it because every time it increments, one time it is going to be odd. The next time it is going to be even. And that is exactly what I want with the printing also. One time I want a lower case, the next time I want a upper case. So I'm going to use this odd and even to match with the lower case and upper case. And how am I going to do that? That is where the next if else comes. So coming back inside over here, I'm going to say if count mod two equal equal to zero, this expression is always going to be true when count is going to be an even number. Okay. So currently count is one, one is an odd number. So one mod two is not going to be equal to zero. Correct. It is going to be equal to one. Remember modulo operation gives us the remainder. So this if block will not be executed. We'll go into the else block and we will say C out alphabet. What is alphabet? Alphabet is a correct. So the first thing is going to be printed over here as the output. Let's print a. A is printed on the first line. This else block is executed. You'll go, you'll come down. You'll say alphabet plus plus alphabet is a, which is lowercase a. When you say alphabet plus plus, it will become B because ASCII value of B is 98 and ASCII value of A is 97. So when you say plus plus 97 becomes 98. So alphabet basically will now become B over here. Correct. All right. So after this, you are coming to the end of the inner for loop. We'll again go to the start of the inner for loop. J will become plus plus. So J will become two is two less than equal to one. Again, this condition is checked, right? I is still one. So J has become two is two less than or equal to one. No, two is greater than one, right? So now we will exit outside this inner for loop and you'll come at the last statement of the outer for loop, which is C out and L. And L does nothing but it brings you to the next line in C++ programming. So now our cursor is over here at the second line. So this is the last statement of the outer for loop. 
so again we'll come at the start of the outer for loop and again this for loop will run for one more time because this outer for loop is obviously gonna run for five times over here i will become i plus plus and i will become two okay so now i has become two we will go inside the for loop we will say int j equals to one so j is again gonna be initialized as one j has to be less than equal to i is j which is one less than two yes so you'll go inside you'll say count plus plus so count was one previously now it has become two remember count is initialized outside these two for loops so they will retain the value right so count will now become two so count has become two now if you go in the if block you'll say count mod two is two mod two equal to zero yes this is true so now what will happen this if block statement will be executed you will say see out care alphabet minus 32 so this statement what is this statement over here alphabet is nothing but b currently what is the value of b integer value of b 98 so we will replace 98 minus 32 so as i said the difference between lowercase alphabet and its same uppercase alphabet is 32 so if you do 98 minus 32 you'll get 66 98 minus 32 will be 66 and 66 is nothing but uppercase b so over here this bracket after resolving this bracket what you're gonna get you're gonna get 66 and when you convert it to care because int and care are compatible with itself with themselves they can be easily converted into any of the two when you do a care of 66 the output that is going to be printed is uppercase b so uppercase b is going to be printed over here and since this if block is executed this else will not be executed so you will directly come at the last statement inside this inner for loop you will say alphabet plus plus alphabet is still small b okay you are not changing the value of alphabet over here over here you are simply calculating this expression but the internal value of alphabet is still b but when you say alphabet plus plus b becomes c because you are incrementing by 1 so b was 98 when you do plus plus it becomes 99 and 99 is the ascii value of c so let's make that change so now we have c over here this is the last statement in the first round of inner for loop you will get back to the start of the inner for loop and now j becomes 2 now again you check this condition is j less than equal to i is j less than equal to i which is also 2 yes so now the inner for loop is gonna run for two times because you can see on the second line we want two alphabets so inner for loop will run two times so again you'll go inside and start with count plus plus what is count count is two so when you say plus plus count becomes three so again you check if count mod two equal equal to one so count has become three three is odd so three mod two is going to be equal to one not zero so this if block will not be executed you will directly execute else block you will say c out alphabet what is alphabet alphabet is lowercase c so that is going to be printed over here lowercase c since else block is executed you will come at the last statement in the inner for loop say alphabet plus plus so small c plus plus means 99 plus plus which is nothing but 100 which is equal to d so c becomes lowercase d correct then you come at the end of the inner for loop so you'll go at the start of the inner for loop j plus plus j will now become 3 and 3 is not less than equal to 2 because i is still 2 so you come outside the inner for loop you say c out end l you come onto the new line on the command prompt which is the last statement of the outer for loop and then you again go to the start of the outer for loop where i becomes 3 so i hope you are understanding step by step what is happening at every line inside the loops so when i becomes 3 this inner for loop will run 3 times we will print d as uppercase because now count will become 4 and 4 mod 2 is going to give us 0 so we will do alphabet minus 32 so small d that is 100 minus 32 will give us 68 that is the uppercase d so that will be printed first then alphabet will be plus plus so we will get e then you'll again come at the start of the inner for loop again count will become plus plus count will become phi which is odd so you'll directly print e in the small case itself then you'll again come and do alphabet plus plus then we will get small f we'll come at the start of the inner for loop this for loop as i said will run three times now so the count will become six six mod two is going to give us zero 
So now we are going to print the uppercase alphabet F. Correct? So I'm going quickly now because I hope you've got the step by step process of how this pattern is being generated. And now you guys can simply pause this video and you know dry run this code yourself or directly type it out on your code editor and you know run it and get the result. Ultimately you should get this as the output. Okay so this was the quick visual representation and dry running of the code. Now let's quickly jump to the practical side on our code editor and type out this code and see if it is actually generating this pattern or not. Okay so as you can see on the screen I am using the VS code with the CPP extension that is C++ extension. You guys can use any other code editor. Previously I used to use Dev C++. Now I'm using this VS code which I feel is much more updated. So as you can see I have basically typed out all the code. I will share this code with you guys on our website. So this is nothing but the entire structure of C++ program. And then I'm just saying printing pattern and then I'm saying enter the number of lines to be printed. And this is the code that we actually saw on the digital blackboard where we initialize n equals to zero then take the n value from the user. We create alphabet variable and initialize it as a. We initialize a count variable as zero and then the loops run to print out the pattern, right? So let's run this and let's see if our program is working fine or not. Okay, so as you can see on the screen, I ran this code and I am getting an output. You can see I'm getting printing pattern and then I've been asked enter the number of lines to be printed. Let's enter five. And when I hit enter, there you go. You can see we are getting the output A. Then we are getting a uppercase B. Then we are getting lowercase C. Then we are getting uppercase D. Then we are getting lowercase E. F so on and so forth. This means our code is working perfectly fine. Once again, let me just quickly run it again for you guys. You can see we are getting that output. Let's print six lines and there you go. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U. Now if you exceed the number of alphabets, obviously some garbage is going to be printed because this alphabet calculation will give us the ASCII values of other symbols. So just to show you guys, if I say seven lines, if I say eight lines, I want to print, you can see after Z, we are getting some different symbols because the ASCII values of these symbols come after Z. Okay. So don't get confused if such pattern is being printed. Okay. So this was the output. This was the practical side of the triangle printing pattern where we printed the alphabets in consecutive order, but alternating with lowercase and uppercase. Okay, so that's it for this video guys. I hope you understood this one. In further videos in this playlist, we will undertake many more such patterns. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Let me know in the comments how this video was. If you have any request for patterns, let me know in the comments. Maybe I'll cover that as well. So thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Peace.